Hello and welcome to the first um, chapter of my build diary, uh, the video. Um, I've got a website up and running called www.bluespaniel.co.uk and that details um, everything to do with this build. Uh, it was inspired by a guy called John Robertson um, up in Scotland who's built one of these hovercraft, which is a, a Sevtech Prospector. Um, he documented his build and that was instrumental uh, in my decision to build this make and model of hovercraft. Anyway, let's go for a guided tour of the hovercraft so far. The hull's about three quarters away complete now. Uh, it's an 18 foot hovercraft um, made out of um, foam composite, which is a, a layers of foam which is tricast four and five. Um, and they've been wrapped in fiberglass, which makes them incredibly strong yet light uh, and very buoyant, which is an ideal material for a hovercraft to be built on. Anyway, this is the rear of the hovercraft. Um, these are the ducts for my two lift fans. I've still got to make the ducts yet. Um, the profiles of which to channel the air in smoothly. Um, it's two 24 inch um, nine bladed lift fans that actually give you um, the lift and a massive propeller that sits at the back um, that gives you thrust. Uh, this is the engine bay. Um, I've still got to install these uh, inspection hatches. A very, very simple job, which is why they've been left so long. Um, these wooden structures, uh, basically the inner one are the engine mounts. Um, these still need fiberglassing. The outer one is the guard frame mount, um, that has been fiberglass now, um, and it's, it's incredibly strong. Um, the rear of the hovercraft, you can see a wooden section running all the way around the hovercraft. This is where the skirt attaches, um, and the tube sticking out the back there needs to be trimmed um, flush with the back of the hovercraft, and that is for the, uh, the fuel pipes to come through the engine compartment. Looking on the side of the hovercraft now, this is the, the side is actually finished. Um, we've got a grab handle, uh, an inspection hatch, for one of the buoyancy containers, compartments. Um, coming up to the front, there's passenger bay, um, backrest, seat, underneath the seats, two fuel tanks. Uh, they've not been plumbed in, I've still got to finish the edges of the seat and decide whether I'm actually going to hinge the back end or, or just have it lift off when I need access to it. Um, the cockpit area itself then, uh, with the dashboard, uh, instrument panels haven't been bolted in, they've just been um, placed there just because they're good basically. Uh, and it's a bit of inspiration and just so I can see things progressing. Um, the cutout on the left hand side is for a marine VHF radio. Um, on the top will be a GPS and the, uh, the pilot station is on the right hand side. Uh, I'm halfway through constructing the uh, windscreen mount at the moment, uh, which is a mixture of uh, wood, wooden frame um, and fiberglass. The windscreen itself is a Mondeo uh, Mark II heated windscreen that I've managed to crack. So I'm going to have to get a new one for the scrappies, uh, but that, that's not that expensive. Uh, and I'm actually partial way through at the moment doing the uh, windscreen wiper mounts. Um, quite problematic due to their geometry and the fact that the actual uh, the shaft from the gearboxes, this is one of the little gearboxes, um, is very short. And when it comes through the half inch foam um, at the correct angle, um, there's actually next to nothing protruding through the edge uh, for the actual wiper blade to bolt onto. Um, so I'm going to have to make myself an enclosure here uh, to actually mount them properly. But uh, a minor technicality. Uh, the front end has been profiled in shape now, but just needs fiberglassing. Um, but again, that's, that's a fairly simple job. Um, here's something you don't see very often on a, a Sevtech. Curves. Sexy little curves. Uh, I thought it might be a bit different than just the, uh, the slab-sided uh, look to most Sevtech. Um, I'll probably get slammed for it because it's non-traditional, but hey, I like a bit of a curve. Anyway, moving around the hovercraft again. Um, one of the first things I had to do in my build, uh, is because I'm, I'm actually using an old REF hangar, um, this is all part of REF Ashbourne, and it was a standby set room where they had the generators. Um, the floor of which uh, is incredibly uneven. So the first job I did was actually build a trailer, uh, and I've built the hovercraft on that trailer um, using jack in legs, that's given me a, a flat and level platform um, for the build so far. Coming down the left hand side, um, the side's almost finished, um, I just need to profile this edge here uh, and, and glass it as I've done with this one here. Again, a grab handle and an inspection um, socket. Um, the back of the hovercraft's got four buoyancy compartments. The first one is in here, uh, this has to be capped yet with some fiberglass. Second one is under this section here. There's a, uh, it's not shown on the plans, but there's a horizontal divider that runs across the middle that splits this area into two sections, and obviously you've got the two on the other side. Um, running along the length of the hovercraft, um, I've got coolant pipes, and they'll take the, uh, the, the warm coolant from the engine uh, to a car heater element under the dashboard, which will give me nice um, 
warm air when I'm cruising in uh, really cold Scotland, which is where I'm going to be doing a lot of my cruising. Um, these are my plans, available for purchase from America. Um, very, very good set of plans, however, you do need a bit of imagination uh, when you're interpreting them. Some of the things that are left um, for you to envisage. Um, when I started making the panels, which is just basically lots of chunks of foam, uh, fiberglass both sides, quite a boring process. I started colouring them in on the, the plans because it, 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 I didn't seem to be getting anywhere. By colouring them in, uh, I actually did seem to be achieving something, but then I got bored, so I didn't carry on. So anyway, that's the, uh, the plans for the next set of build. Uh, moving over here then, uh, I'm going to step up on it and in. Very uh, strong structure. Um, the top of the fan cowl there have been reinforced with some plywood. Um, that's going to take one of the mounting uh, points for the, uh, the fan guard. Um, as I said, the rear seat contains two fuel tanks uh, and the battery, although I may end up putting the battery in the engine bay. Um, the ubiquitous plastic garden furniture. Um, ideal for Sevtex. Um, I don't do the kneeling down. I've got uh, knackered knees from 23 years in the army, so I want a bit of comfort. So there we go. So that's the, uh, the pilot station. And the look through the incredibly dusty uh, windscreen at the moment and the gauges. So anyway, that is uh, the end of chapter one of my build diary. Uh, I'll intend to do one of these every couple of weeks just to keep people abreast of what's going on. Uh, but basically, check out my website, www.bluespaniel.co.uk. Um, and hopefully uh, it'll be of use to someone. See you later.